So then, let's dive into a controversial topic around punishing dogs. Should we do it at all? And if so, when and how exactly should we punish our dogs? Welcome back to Femora Canine Training, where we help you become high-level canine leaders that are able to raise perfect canine companions. And today we've got another video question to help you do just that. So without further ado, let's roll straight into that video. Hello, mate. This is Mark Sonnentall. We love your course. We're doing the perfect puppy course. And we have just started taking River, our Aussie doodle, out. Now, he is barking at everybody and he is pulling at the lead. I'm doing the 180 turn that you teach, uh, which works very nicely at home and in the garden, but is absolutely not working in the street. So, some advice, please. Um, should we use a prong collar? Any suggestions are welcome to stop the barking. I've been spraying him with some water in his face to stop him. Uh, he's got a little bit better, but the pulling on the lead, not really sure what to do. Much appreciated. Thank you. All our love. No problem whatsoever, and I appreciate all your support, and I'm absolutely going to dive into this topic and help you with this situation. So as far as I'm concerned, in this specific situation, there's two problems that we need to address. One of them being around communicating with our dogs, what kind of corrections are applicable and when to use them to solve tr problem behaviours, but then more importantly, what is creating those problems at such a young age. Now to me, this sounds like a classic example of you having a communication breakdown with your dog. Now let's look at where those communication breakdowns come from. When I talk about achieving excellence with a dog, I have my pyramid of excellence. It's a three-stage pyramid with communication sitting right at the very top. When I talk about communication, I do mean letting a dog know how and when to do the thing that we do want them to do, but also helping them understand when they're doing things that we don't want them to do and getting them to stop those problem behaviors. If we want to efficiently be able to communicate with our dog, at the top of the pyramid, we must have the two layers underneath developed perfectly. When people are struggling with communicating with their dog, that means that the layer underneath communication is broken, and that layer is relationship. It sounds like you're struggling to build an effective relationship with your dog where they're looking up to you for guidance and direction. When you're out on a walk, the dog is pulling at the end of the lead. They're making their own decisions. They're becoming reactive and barking to other things, living in a state of confusion and not knowing how to act and you're struggling to communicate to them and how appropriately to act so the communication is broken because of a lack of relationship so if the relationship level is broken it means the level at the bottom the foundation isn't in place to be able to build good relationship which then allows good communication and that bottom level is leadership it's about you and everybody in your home being calm consistent leaders being able to set out consistent rules boundaries and expectations where the dog knows that they are enforced with militant consistency what that allows is beautiful consistency where the dog can now look up to you for guidance and direction they have an ability to know that every single situation that they can find themselves in you are going to be able to help communicate how to appropriately respond. That is the pyramid of excellence. Wonderful leadership at the bottom, informing a great relationship with your dog that then allows you to communicate effortlessly. So I personally think that this is a classic example of where people are focusing on the communication level at the top without putting enough thought into the relationship and the leadership that underpin it. So my first bit of advice is to take a huge step back. In Ensure that yourself and everybody in the house are instilling militant levels of rules, boundaries and expectations and ensuring that they are provided and followed consistently every second of every day. That will inform a better relationship with your dog that will then allow you to communicate better, which takes us on to how to then better communicate with your dog. So then let's firstly look at prong collars. Personally, I don't think you need a prong collar in this situation. I think it would be a plaster over the problem 
problem and wouldn't actually address the root cause. To get to the root cause of the problem, I think you need to go back and look at your leadership and relationship with your dog. And with a breed like you have, a prong collar should be unnecessarily and not necessarily required. Now, I advocate for prong collars and I use them very regularly. However, I like to help people get to a point where they never need a tool like a prong collar and can use nothing more than a piece of string if that's what they want. As that, to me, is the essence of high-level canine leadership with perfect relationships with their dog. So for me, I would hold off on the prong collar for now and put in the extra hard work at the leadership and relationship levels. So then let's look at spraying a dog in the face with a bottle of water. Can it work? Absolutely. Is it a very old school approach? Yes, definitely. It's something that I know my granddad used to do and his dad used to do. Is it something that we do much nowadays? Not really. Like I say, it can work. I just think that there's much more efficient ways of communicating with our dog. And ultimately, in the situation that you're faced in, again, I think it's a plaster to the actual problem. The barking is stemming from reactivity. That reactivity is coming because your dog is making decisions for itself. Your dog is making decisions for itself because it doesn't think it can look up to you for guidance and direction. That means that your communication is broken because of a poor relationship that's informed by poor leadership. Refix your leadership build a better relationship and you'll effortlessly be able to communicate with your dog without the need of tools like prong collars or spray bottles. Now, does that mean that you should allow these behaviors to happen unchallenged or uncorrected? Absolutely not. I think you're in a situation that you need to simultaneously be working on your leadership and relationship whilst helping your dog understand what behaviors are acceptable and what aren't acceptable. For that, I would like to see you utilizing a slip lead and becoming a master of lead pressure. What that means is that when any pressure is applied to the lead, whether that's a minor pop on the lead, means, hey, stop what you're doing, but more importantly, look back up to me for guidance and direction. Or if the pressure comes on for more extended periods of time to turn that pressure off, you must give in and come back to me and look at me for guidance and direction. That's why it's so incredibly important that we always have a loose lead with no pressure, so that when pressure is applied to the lead, it means something, and the dog to turn the pressure off must come back to us for guidance and direction. That's the essence of the 180 drill. When the dog is pulling out in front of us, we turn 180, go back the other way, that applies pressure, and for the dog to release that pressure, they have to turn back in and drop back in. What we have done there is we've corrected them with lead pressure. We can then use our obedience training to lure them back into the right position. When they're in that position, then we can praise and reinforce it, then we move forward again. If they move out of that position, Position, we can then utilize our lead pressure to remind them, hey, no, that's not acceptable. Remember, I always need you to be looking up to me for guidance and direction. That happens a hundred times easier if it's built on relationship and leadership. If there is no leadership there and a dog with no relationship, that then becomes incredibly difficult, which is again, where I think you're struggling. So as is always the case, the fault is lying with yourself as the owner. But don't take that as a bad thing, take it as a positive thing. What that means is that your dog isn't broken. It simply means that you've made a few minor mistakes. The incredible, overwhelming positive about that statement, if you're willing to be self-reflective and accept that minor bit of criticism, is that if you're the problem, much, much more importantly, you're also the solution. And when you're the solution, it means that you can achieve incredible heights of success. And I encourage you to get after it, put in the work, and you will be able to achieve those levels of success that you've always dreamed of. I hope that was helpful. If it was, give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because I can't wait to see you on the next episode.